Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. This is part two of my interview with Curtis Dedato, the president of Dedato Consulting. He's an HR specialist. And in this part of the interview, we talk about AI, the importance of building work relationships in order to have greater work satisfaction, and also in order to advocate for yourself as the workplace changes and in response to AI, that you position yourself in the best possible place. So I hope you enjoy this interview. Especially in remote environments. Um, You know, there's the conversation between what's better, hybrid, remote, on-site. I personally think, and this is where I still, again, I have to draw back on relationships. And to try to build relationships virtually through a computer screen 20 minutes at a time, I'm sorry, but it's not practical. I know that we're, you know, a lot of employees, and I get that that's very convenient for employees, especially with younger families, or if there's, you know, I get it. There are some, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule. I get it. I'm not trying to go through every one of those, but to build these meaningful relationships and to try to do that virtually is just, I I think it's unrealistic, quite honestly. Um, And so when you're in that remote environment, especially being, you know, I'm, I'm in my home office right now. I know what's in front of me on my computer screen at any given time, but since I don't have these quick cooler chats or, you know, stop by coffee to have some of these organic conversations, it's unlikely that you're going to know what's going on with everybody else. So we just get into the mode. We, we do, 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 do. And despite the fact that we're already seeing, you know, AI start to infiltrate the workforce in the last six months, I just looked at a study yesterday on the 25 most, um, what was it, in-demand jobs that are coming up and two of the top 10 were AI related. So, you know, AI is going to get very good at just do, 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 do. So that means that there's going to have to be opportunities in the workforce to really emphasize the meaningful relationships and emphasize who you are as a person or else you're going to get replaced. I don't, I don't know how else to put it. Again, this isn't like a happy piece, but we're already starting to see it in the workforce. Okay. And so one of the things people can do to be proactive, they can communicate, they can clarify, they can ask questions, but also there's nothing wrong with either between evaluations saying, you know, I would like to offer more value to the company. I would like an opportunity to get better at this, that, and the other, you know, how can I how can I use my skills to serve this, you know, this agency, this institution, this business, so that right. you're asking about the opportunities? Because if you don't ask, you might never find out. And Correct. they will make decisions. People make decisions all the time. And we, I think we expect people to mind read, you know, that, right. you know, well, they should know this or that, or, well, I'd really like this, but information never hurts. You can ask what opportunities are going to be opening up, you know, what are things that I, that I'm already doing? What can I do to prepare for right. needs that you see coming? So that we engage, and that, I think people, you're respected if you communicate, if you ask questions, if it's evident that you're trying to do something meaningful and you're not just taking a paycheck. Completely agreed. Completely agreed. And that's what gets us back into that, that second piece of the boundaries as well was that, 
that protecting your relationships. You know, that was something that I always wanted to model in the workforce as well as to say, hey, the people that I work with are very meaningful. And so for me to develop relationships, that means I have to be proactive. So, you know, there are often times where I've seen this go the, the unhealthy route of where people aren't protecting relationships. And that looks like the cutthroat environments. You know, everyone is just waiting to take credit for somebody else. Um, trying to chop other people down because it really isn't a team environment. But I, that's not healthy anyways. If that's what the culture is, my, my recommendation for people is just to get out. You know, if that's commonplace, there's really not a whole lot that you can do because within these boundaries conversations, something that we always have to do is to value people for who they are, but also accept them for who they are. I've spent many, many years and many, uh, this took me up until probably a couple of years ago, really understand that it's not my responsibility to change anybody. That comes from a workplace, you know, dynamic of I'd see them struggling or maybe they weren't, you know, have the best people skills and to say, okay, well, maybe they just need to soften up. Maybe I can help develop them and coach them. But I'm like, how arrogant of me to be like, I can, I can change this person. So within the workforce, I feel like that is something also very important, especially from a leadership perspective is to say, we want to help provide people with opportunities to be who they can be and help maybe round off some of those rough edges, but we can't change them. Yeah, they're not going to change. Do you have other suggestions for people of how to protect or develop those work relationships? Proactivity, just getting back to that, I think that's one of the most healthy things that you can do. Um, when I would start working at new organizations or in some consulting roles, I didn't want to be that first email or that first call with an ask. Because so many times, that's oftentimes when you hear from people is just to say, hey, I need something. And then that already starts that off in a bad foot. So what I recommend, this served me very, very well. And again, this was genuine. This wasn't, you know, anything of like, ooh, I'm trying to save up my asks for later. It was, no, I want to actually help know these people. So I would set up meetings. I would reach out to people. I'd send them an email. I'd look through organizational charts of people that maybe I wasn't working with or engaging with it at the time. But, hey, I'd like to understand more about what you do. And that was it. You know, maybe we'd have a, a 10 or 15 minute conversation, sometimes 30. And so that would help me learn about them. That helped them understand like, hey, I'm actually here to support. I'm not here to just say like, hey, this is what I want you to do. Do Hey, here are the asks. It was, let me understand who you are as a person. And I think that goes a long way. So especially in a remote environment, you know, I know that there's instant messaging software or emails just send an email to somebody and say, could we schedule 15 minutes, you know, sometime next week just to get to chat? And I think that will go a long way. Um, remembering the small things, remembering details. There are some people that I've known that just, they remember birthdays. They remember um, kids' names. They remember what they're uh, interested in outside of work or pets. Those little pieces do go a long way so that you're not just another face or a name, but to help remember what people do outside that is a really, really big deal. And that's another thing that I've seen really good managers do well is to ask about, hey, how did you know your son do in their, their soccer game last week? Or how did your daughter um, do in their basketball game? Just little things like that. That really does go a long way because it shows that you care. People love to talk about themselves for the most part. And so anything mm -hmm. you do to try to get to know another person, just to know more about what they do, what does that what like how does that roll out from day to day or week to week that 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 feels very i guess honoring would be the word and it's appreciated and then that makes the work environment more of a a warm place uh for everybody and you make it more comfortable for yourself well curtis how can people learn more or follow you so on a couple of different social platforms, on Facebook, I post content regularly to both of those, and I'm getting back into the habit of posting videos. Uh, once again, as well, I've got a, a YouTube channel, and also my website, thedattoconsulting.com, is a great way to uh, get in touch. I'm always looking to work and help coach people that are really trying to understand what their purpose is, how they align their identity, work through their past experiences, what are their motivators, how are their view for the future, and to really all synthesize that and to say, oh, so this is why I'm wired like I am. And this is what I need to do to really pursue my potential um, and do public speaking engagements as well, which very much enjoy. So definitely my website, 
Um, there's a contact link that's on there and be more than glad to uh, touch base with anyone who's interested. Okay, so I'll put a link to your website in the uh, notes for the podcast. So you've given us a lot to think about, a lot of practical ideas to make work, which is a huge part of most people's lives, more meaningful and satisfying. So thank you, Curtis, for sharing with us. Thanks for having me again today, Tony. So thanks, everybody, for listening. And if this helped you, share it with a friend. 